Hey y'all, are you ready to find the surface area of a rectangular prism? P R I S M. Are you ready? It's it's so easy. I'm afraid I could easily fall asleep. Surface area of a rectangular prism. I think I could fall asleep just telling you about it. It is so. I mean, sorry. Anyway, it's so easy. Are you ready? Here it comes. Rectangular prism. Ta da! All right, okay, I'm getting a little excited, but who cares? Watch. That's a prism. What's a prism? I like to use the phrase 3D. 3D. You know what 3D is, right? Okay. It's as if you gave it dimension here. Look at that. 3D. Now, what I've got on here are some sides. I got one, two, three, four, five, six sides. They call them faces if you want to be technical about it. Anyway, six of them. Now, one has six. See that number six? That's the length of one of them. You see that number four? That's the width of one. But that's also the width of that one on the side there where you got nine as a length. See that nine there? Okay. You put all these together, you can get yourself some widths and lengths. Length, time, always remember, length times width equals area. Okay? Remember that? Length, I'll give you that formula. A, area is equal to length times width. I'm talking about area of a rectangle. A equals L times W. Okay, so you got, I'll tell you, you you're going to fall over in shock when I show you how simple it is. Watch. First of all, I got this one right here. This side right here. Yeah, this side right here. Okay? Yeah, let's get it over here. I don't like that side. Let's do it this side here. There, I like that one better. Okay. That has six length, four width. Okay? Six times four, 24. That's the area of that one right there. Area of this one right here, 24. And it turns out that at the opposite side, right over here, that one right there, is also 6 times 4, 24, okay? So you got two areas right here. Then you got these right here. These little babies right here. There we go. This right here. Let's see. goes right like this. This right here goes right like this. Right in there. It goes right. I'm trying to get it right here. It goes right. Well, I'm having a trouble with it. There you go. That. Holy. There we go. This right here. That right there. That right there. That there. That side. That's also got. It's nine times four. When you multiply that one times one and a two and a three and three on the other side and a four down below. How did I get that? It's very simple. I got one as the top right here. It's the same length and width. I got the one right here. Same length and same length and width. And I got one running right down there. Same length and width. And I got the one over here. Same length and width. Four of them. Four sides. Same length and width. So what do we got here? Watch. I got. There you go. Six times four equals 24. Six times four equals 24. That's the two sides. Two end sides. And then I got nine times four. Nine times four. Nine times four. 9 times 4. What's that? Length times width, length times width, length times width, length times width. Four different sides for length times width of 9 times 4, and two sides of length times width of 6 times 4. That gives me a grand total of, the grand total of, what's the number? 192. I added them all up. I got 192. That's my area of that rectangle. I told you it was easy. All you got to do is L times W. And you do it four times for the longer ones because that's where you had the longer sides. And the two shorter sides, you put those together. Now, the tricky thing comes when I'm going to do the surface area for a, tri a triangular prism. Blah, 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 blah. Let's try it again. Surface area for a triangular prism. Now, I tell you that why is because of this. When you're dealing with the surface area of a triangle prism, you got a little bit of tricky math involved. Now you got the same kind of thing 
So you got this side. It's going to be like a rectangle right here. You got that side's like a rectangle right there. And you got this side right here is like a rectangle. So you got three different sides are like rectangles, right? All right. So you got three different sides are like rectangles. However, you have these two triangles right here. This one here and this one right over here. That's a triangle there. And remember with triangles, with triangles, what you have is a triangle has the area, surface area, of one half base times height. Okay? Since you got one half base times height, then it gets a little more complicated. Look what it shows there. I've got, for example, one side is got a six. That's the one side there. Okay? Now I got another this side to four right here. Let me go back. Let's go back to the very original triangle. Let's go back to the original for just a second. Watch the original. I just showed you. I just showed this to you a minute ago, okay? And that's not the good side. That's not the good side. There it is. There we go. Look at what it says here. You got the bottom side there is six. That one right there. See that six right there? And then see this one right here where it says four see that four there that's another side and then you go over here and you see a 12 right over here okay that's the length of this right here the 12 if i can show it there that's it that's a 12 right there and over here right over here is a four so those are the sides you got to remember 12 Six and four. Because you're going to find that six over there, too. And that's four over there, too. And you're going to find that right here is 12 as well. 12, 12, 12. Right there is four. Right here, four. All these are pretty straightforward, okay? Now. Let's go back over here. I got that one half base times height. That means to find the surface area of this triangle, I gotta find the height of the triangle. Now, how do I find the height of a triangle? It's like this. I'm cutting this big triangle right here into a little, two little ones right here. We're cutting it right down there. That's what I'm doing. I'm cutting it right in half. Ah. Uh, See, I can't. Mm. Cutting it right in half. I got to do it like this because this thing is really, I don't, at the right angle, it doesn't look good. There to there. I got to cut that right in half, right? So, how do I do that? Well, I cut it in half. I got to figure out what length it is. And there's only one way to figure out the length of that. You see that little formula down there? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Have you seen that before? If I hear Pythagorean theorem, I'm going to go, yeah. All right, Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which means you go to your next step. I told you it's a little complicated, but follow, you're doing good. You go to your next step, you got a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? A squared plus b squared equals c squared, which means you got, I took the six that I had there. Remember, see that big six there? You cut that in half because now instead of that whole length being considered, you're not talking about the whole side. You're talking about half that side. That now is a three right there. Not six, but three. And that side's a four. Remember that? So you got three and four. And then this one here, right here, that's unknown. That's why you got the A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So what do you do? You go ahead and go A squared plus B squared. A is the unknown. A squared plus B squared. That's 3 squared is 9, equals 4 squared, which is 16. Then you go A squared equals 16 minus 9, and A squared equals 7. That means you got to find the square root of 7. Yeah, I know. Told you got a little complicated. So you got a square root of 7. That is the side right here. See? Square root of 7. That's the side. Now, the way I use that is this. I figure, I'm guessing a little bit. I'm, I'm taking a risk here. 
I say that the square root of 7, it's smaller than 3. Why? Well, 3 times 3 is 9. So we know it's, uh, 9 is bigger than 7. And we know 2 times 2 is 4. Because two, 2 times 2 is 4. And so 7 is bigger than 2. So I'm inching my way up there. And I'm going to just guess it's like 2, 6, 2, 7, 2, 8. Let's go with 2, 8. 2.8, right? So I got 2.8 times that one side is 3. You see that 3 there. That gives me an 8.4. And I divide that by 2 and I get 4.2. See how I got that? Okay, so that is my area for that triangle. Okay? Area equals 1 half base times height. I determined that the base is 3 because I divided 6 and a half. Cut 6 and a half. That's 3, and we found out that one side is a square root of 7. I'm going to call it 2.8, just to guess. It's close enough. could be 2.7, but we'll make it 2.8. And we go 8.4 divided by 2 gives you 4.2. 4 8.4 divided by 2, 4.2 is the area. Aha, we're getting closer now, folks. Surface area, 4.2. Now. What do I do with all these numbers? Got to add them all up. And here's what we do. We go ahead and add these together. And we find ourselves with 120, 152. And we told it to be 152 plus 8.4. And we're going to find ourselves with 160.4. Is that right? I think so. Watch what I did here. I had three areas of 48. Okay? Three areas of 48. How do I get those? It's these ones right here. That's an area of 48. That's an area of 48. That's an area of 48. 48, 48, 48. Okay, I got all those are 48. Then I had two sides here, right here. They're going to be 8.4. Or, pardon me, they're going to be 4.2. Excuse me. 4.2, 4.2 is 8.4, and then 3 times 4.48 is going to be 164. Am I right there? 4 times 4 is, 4, 4 times 3 is 120, and 24 is 154, and 8.4 is 160.4. Get it? You better not be lost, considering all the work I just did there for you. 160.4. Now, if I didn't add that right, then shame on me. If I add it right, then no shame on me. And if I didn't add it right, it doesn't matter, because you know what? I think, I say, I think, I say, I say, I think. You sort of get it. I think. We'll try next time. But anyway, let's get you started. I should get you started. I should get you more than started. You should be able to, you should have it figured out by now. Well, you'll let me know, won't you? Later.